and even though, it, I mean, I think you can do it if, even for Windows, but which is crazy, you can just build a binary. Maybe. So, if you're uh, making a new program, then uh, let's look at the whole C with GPC. Uh, you got your C code, you pass it to the compiler, you get an assembly from it. That's, uh, by the way, human readable assembly. You give it to the assembler, it gives you machine readable assembly. It's uh, an executable. And then you give it to a trigger, it makes a read executable to run. And you can call through some blue code, in this case, the runtime, runtime link editor, and so uh, to uh, the blue code, it knows how to call libc. And the libc knows about the code. It has some OS specific knowledge. Now, if you are uh, making a new program image, um, most likely you wouldn't want to reinvent the maker, and you wouldn't want to reinvent the assembler. Uh, suppose your C++, uh, you have uh, all these tools uh, that are for C. Uh, your names, they don't, they are more uh, verbose than C. You have this uh, really big thing. Um, why don't you encode it in some uh, C legible way? It's really nice. I mean, my rule, well, you don't want to, uh, if you have a method of encoding like this, but suppose you didn't, uh, um, how do you encode this? Uh, suppose it was just accepted, but you don't want the, whenever you add a new thing for your programming languages, to edit the assembler linker for every kind. So it's pretty nice that this uh, just encode it in a C compatible way, because this is a very weird encoding that C++ uses. Uh, C++ field can tell you what it is. It's standard basic string something, I don't know, C++. So you don't need to write your assembly and linker. That's like your goal. Expect them to be saved. 
holy saints in uh, Go, we don't have that. Apparently, that's a, a, a limitation. They uh, have a proposal to change it. I guess it has to be updated to a new Go version. They're paying some costs for not having this. Uh, but in Go, all the registers are passed on the stack, and all registers are considered temporary. So if you call a function, then uh, you can't expect your register to say where they are. You say something there. If you want it to, you want to use it later. Better save it on the stack. And uh, one important thing that uh, I kept thinking about uh, that return to the later R28 for ARM64 and Go is the struct G. So I had this problem when I was uh, at HMP Stephen. This is the first I got. I was. Uh, I had my code, code failing to run for some reason. It's a more complicated code. I could print hello world. But when I try to, like every BSD person, what I wanted to do is uh, see what it's up to when it's not running, I try control T, and then it crashed. <laughs> so uh, uh, what happens when you control T, you pass a signal, and I couldn't pass it. So it's crashing. Uh, Fortunately, I have GDB. It told me that uh, G dot M is null, and then I'm directing it. So, what's G? That the uh, go thing struck. See what I have on this slide. <laughs> so, what's the uh, thing? No, we know it's a uh, go thing struck. You know, go thing sounds like uh, thread loss of storage. What's thread loss of storage? Uh, we have this thing called the for ARM64 TPIDR L0. Uh, it's some uh, uh, in that place where you can put stuff, and for normal threaded code, that's where it puts the thread loss of stuff. So, and that sounds similar. And then I have to think about it to test it out, because obviously something is wrong. Probably it's thread loss of storage, because G is the goal thing. It has its own storage, and something is wrong with it. And uh, well, who sets it up? Uh, to write it, you have two methods. You have the uh, architecture-specific way. That's the uh, MRF TP idea. That's the way to call it from Go. Because it has its own assembler, and its own assembler syntax. And uh, you can also use syscall. LWC set private or get private to get it the uh, store location. You don't have to uh, use a have an architecture specific way. So TPIDR is the thread pointer. Who sets it up? I don't know. Just think about it. Because it wasn't being set up. Um, let's think about it more. If I'm call, if Go can call C function, who owns this stuff? You know, I have this uh, thread pointer. Does it belong to me? How do I cooperate with the C code? So, I don't know. And apparently, while I'm looking at this, I found out in the middle that uh, uh, if you're potentially calling C, C you also you need to have a C compiler. And there's an entirely different code path. There's a in C Go, and I was cross compiling, and I didn't have the cross compiler for C setup. So it was disabled. That would explain why some of my code wasn't running entirely. So all the code paths checking for SIGO, not false. And how do you interoperate? I don't know. Who owns the stack? So I said the uh, when I went back, I finally found out that R28 is the struct G. And why am I failing to deliver signals? Because NetBC helpfully crossed this uh, register for me. Uh, when you deliver a signal, you say, oh, if we put in the argument the signal number, the stack pointer, and the <coughs> minutes thing, it could override R28, which is the thing I need. And now it's a stack pointer, <laughs> which looks like a valid address, but uh, it's not a G. So let's go uh, something else. Why did Go, uh, Go has its own big C for calling the kernel? Why is it doing that? 
uh, as we see, go has its own calling convention. It has the uh, it passes parameters differently. When it calls the C function, it has to translate all the registers to the C way of calling stuff. It has to say G and things like that. It has to use uh, Go has the uh, small stacks, so uh, C doesn't expect to have a small stack. So if you want to run C code, it, you better have a big stack ready for it. And it has some accounting that you need to it needs to uh, have. That it doesn't know much about the C code. It wants to uh, do its own accounting for figuring out uh, how to sh schedule its own things. So that's what you do whenever you call any C function. So you probably not going to do that very often. No. So suppose you want to do like regular stuff. That's really a really slow way. So what you need? Why not big C? Um, that's just doing the assembly. It's just everything in assembly. Why not? So uh, you have all the libc stuff re-implemented in Go assembly. Very nice. Okay, how do you start? You want to port your, uh, do your port. You accepted that you need to rewrite libc from scratch. Yay. Uh, so how do you start? Well, that's big code base. Uh, why don't we just pretend it's working? Oh, that's why it's uh, Go OS, Go Arch, uh, Bootstrap. Uh, this is what it says when it succeeds, but uh, when it's erroring, uh, you can figure out where the error is coming from, and then you have some lead where to go in the code, so you don't have to read a million lines of code just to know where to start, so it's kind of nice. So I just lazy pretend you, it's all working, you have a fully ready uh, OS port, why not? So that's how you find your beginning. Uh, so this is the list of things for Lipsy to implement. A very long list. How to create an OS thread that's a SWP create. How to uh, you have a when you call a a new thread, you have to tell it where to start. So you need to set up some things before you can run Go code. That's a, a trampoline. You have to make a trampoline. Uh, you have to tell it how to exit. How to look at the time. So that's a list of functions you need to write in Go assembly. So that's a little example of Go assembly. This is the x86 uh, cargo called all the stuff to ARM64. Uh, and it did 90%, and then I had the other 90%. <laughs> so uh, uh, here, here we see we're passing uh, uh, code uh, 0. FP is the argument. We move it to R0 because the system calls they use the normal call convention and they expect the register to be in R0, the first one, second one in R1, and R comes from the stack. So, both we need to move them from the stack to the registers and then we do the system call. And for some reason, we really like it's exiting cell. It's crash. I don't know why we do it, but here can you see scope and see this? So why let's give up. That's what it's doing. The argument we're passing is the exit code by the way. So how we find out that it's the exit code, I looked at the uh, C syscall header file and it told me the um, the it returns a void and it gets an int. So if you get an in as an input, it's probably in R0, the first one. So that's how we figure out how to pass the argument. In case the cargo copy from x86 doesn't work. And if we compare to libc, let's see that the exit instruction for exit uh, function for libc. It's a lot nicer than R function, and that's because uh, uh, when Exit gets called, the first parameter to exit is the exit argument. But for us, we need to translate from the go calling convention to the uh, to the normal one that the syscalls understand. Uh, something that's not very obvious. Oh, no, let's say that. Uh, eventually, the 
either uh, they want to have all the syscalls available. They, they don't want to write assembly whenever they want to use something for all the OS and, and architectures and stuff all. That's not a very sustainable way of doing things. So they have the C syscall instruction and some more. Uh, you pass it an extra argument, which is a system call number. And for, to that, you can, it's slightly easier to pass parameters. Like, so they can auto generate it. You know, auto generating is a bit hard, but that means for assembly, you have to write how to call an instruction with, uh, in here, this four arguments. Instead of having uh, uh, four arguments, they have one for three arguments, one for six arguments, one for nine, the extra arguments just get ignored. So we just pass stuff on the side for the for passing I think three three arguments. And the first one is probably the the and then we use the C syscall system call. So that's a more easy like you only need to you don't need to generate uh, every system call instruction. Like, you don't have to generate assembly, you just have to generate it and uh, write it by hand, and then you can generate the other part, which is a bit better. So they, that's how they have access to all the other system calls that are in the big list of things we need to impl implement in this system. So we may have said that the system calls use the C, you think that the system calls will use the C calling convention. So uh, there's actually no guarantee that that's the case. They don't have to because if you're not calling C code, you're calling Kelvin. You can decide whatever you want. So you try to run your whole world. doesn't work. So you try to k-trace it. And that's a really nice thing for when you're doing something like the go realistic thing. So it will tell you what you're passing in the argument. So you can figure out what went wrong. And apparently the the C syscall uh, uh, system call it doesn't pass the uh, syscall number in the first argument, even though it's the first argument to the function, it passes it on some other register. So let me show you a demo. Now uh, I did all this work. I was hoping that uh, that um, I'll finish things, but conveniently. I have upstream my work. And because I have upstream it, someone else they will. So I have a slightly outdated version. Show this uh, emulator. I did the uh, I did the uh, before just because it takes a while. Go OS uh, NBC, go architecture on C C four, bootstrap batch because it's using batch scripts for like records of build logic. And I did that, I passed it to the emulator, so it would have it in memory, just so we could skip doing that right now. Very important to have a text page. That's how you know it's a real computer, right? I like the font that you do. That's good. So, uh, I have my uh, bootstrap result. I packed it at the root directory, which makes a lot of sense to do. And that's a go binary. See? If you look closely, you can tell it's a go binary. Oh, that's really bit compact. Because it says it's uh, 599. Because Go doesn't use as any external food chain, it's never done that uh, we have gone beyond uh, NFPC 599. It just hard code this version in everything. Yeah. Other repercussion for doing that. Uh, that's how you know it's a go binary. Also, it tells you go business. So I had, and this is a, an out of date uh, statement. I could co uh, run some basic stuff, sorry for the debug code that I had left. It will tell you, it will tell you uh, that I have the go version 
some endpoints that might be needed. So I have a lot of local changes, and that's how it was. I could run this. I couldn't run uh, more complicated code. Uh, it's a shame I don't have a code to build right now. Let's see if I can make no. No, I can't make it crash. Oh, I did. Uh, so uh, now it's not printing the Go version because if I control T instead of the induce to crash, now it just passed it. Step up. <laughs> that took uh, two months to do. <laughs> <laughs> but they did not have Go, right? Uh, demo. So an update from AGBSD phone. I finally had stream it. I had to do some internet on uh, linter for fixing stuff. So go back. I don't know what it is, but I fixed the errors it generated. So they accepted it upstream. And because it's upstream for two months, other people contributed to it, which is great. And this is a really good advice because uh, I heard that uh, some people are working on a previous version. And I know that one guy started working, and another guy worked on his version. And so guy started contacting me and telling me that my version has bugs, so I think he's not using the version that the same guy had before. So having it out of tree is a problem. It's really hard to cooperate. And people don't know about each other. So having it upstream was a big help. Uh, thanks to Thomas Klausner, which isn't Thomas Klausner, that's the extra N, that's another guy, and he works on Go. Uh, he did some stuff, and uh, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, Joel seemed to uh, fix a bunch of bugs, including the one I was trying to fix. So, yay. So now it should work better than what i shown, because I didn't update my own version, which a lot, has a lot of local changes yet. I haven't seen how much far away it's uh, going. I had a low version, low world before. I could bring both versions. Uh, maybe it's better. Uh, I haven't tried yet. Had too much fun seeing it again. And questions? Yes? Uh, what was the motivation behind this work? Did you have any Go program that you wanted to run on? Uh, no, I just, like, program? I just like quoting programming languages. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More questions? So, how long does it take or did it take? Well, if you know what you're doing, <laughs> I'm sure it was very easy for the people that won't go to go to another land, another OS. But uh, uh, I guess I did uh, maybe two months of work in Go, and it's not like I wish I could say right now that it's doing all the tests and then nothing, nothing yet. But uh, people that understand Go and maybe know how to. Uh, read information about Go and not just read the code, they might have a better time. Maybe they know R64 ahead of time, that would help too. Could you talk about improve your learning? Yeah. Yeah, just a lot of failed attempts. More questions? This is not an R64 question, but more, more or less a, a generic Go uh, live C question. If, um, if um, say, for example, NetBSD or, or you know, whatever project has uh, updated a, a libc call or a syscall, in this case, I'm thinking of FreeBSD's uh, 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 update of the uh, um, yeah. inode 32 to inode 64, uh, which has caused some other programming languages, such as uh, DMD's uh, D language, uh, a lot of gas. How would you handle that? Because yeah, you're implementing, that's a you're missing, implementing the, those syscalls in the, the, the Go Live C, okay? And in the case of the D language, they implemented those syscalls in their Live C, and that caused, yeah, that still a, causes no, no, no yeah, problems. Yeah, for, for uh, OpenBSD, it's been a, I know that uh, OpenBSD keeps uh, uh, changing Go 1.4 because they add stuff and they don't add it in a backwards compatible way. So Go is the ultimate backwards compatible checker. We found out the hard way in NetBSD of some bugs. So it's the same problem. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, we 
have the action be referred to go in the Discord file. Because okay. <laughs> it's just in the, it's calling stuff in an unconventional way. It's fun about that way. And it's fun that we work competitively. Yay. Uh, one tip on MVP in theory, we're supposed to be Cisco version compatible. We make a new number for a new Cisco and try well, to. What was Cisco version? What? You, you, could, you could always uh, version the, uh, the call in the C, right? Yeah, so go to this uh, C. It's uh, uh, convenient for MVP whenever we uh, change the Cisco parameters, we make a new Cisco. So uh, if you gave up on the old one, then it would be from immediately obvious things. Like well, in this case, uh, we, we didn't we didn't uh, change the we didn't create a new syscall for iOS 64, but we did we created a new version, so that mm -hmm. uh, the syscall was still the same, but uh, libc would detect whether uh, an old version of the program or a new version of the application like this call like the API. Yeah, I heard that so you change for that. I, that's why everyone likes to bootstrap. Because uh, like if you had uh, just a binary bootstrap, then now you're screwed because you need the, uh, uh, like, you know, in Rust, you have to use a, an old binary. And you can't find this binary now. That's a problem. So, uh, Fontly Go allows you to bootstrap not for Go, so you don't. You can change the Go 1.4, and then change the normal Go. And hopefully it works. And I did see someone having to change for IO 64 for BBC. Yes. What is special about Go 1.4 that makes it work as a bootstrap or anything? Uh, is it written in C or? The yeah, so it's in C, and uh, keeping it alive. You can bootstrap directly from 1.4 to the latest version there, making okay. sure it's possible. So you keep it alive as a bootstrap mechanism, essentially, yes. as a sort of tiny core implementation that you can see, and that's still being maintained actively, and they just kept the version number as the, as the name. Like, this is called Go 1.4 forever. Or do yeah. they have, what, what they have Go 1.4.1.2.3? One, uh, I don't know how they're versioning. I think they're actually accepting branches, but they haven't tried to the old branch. Any more questions? Did Go already have an ERM64 code generator? Yes, fortunately. <laughs> I'm really glad. Like, uh, look at this. Uh, if, you, if you had to write it yourself, would you have given up at that point? <laughs> uh, let's see. Look at this. I have to write an assembly on the linker. And not only that, their assembler has a custom syntax. They don't use the ARM64 known stuff. They want to pass the per, uh, parameters in a particular way. And like I mentioned, uh, uh, for TPI, either L0, they actually didn't write an instruction for this. They just put the uh, text uh, output. So <laughs> they forgot about that one. So they don't have an MRF uh, instruction? Well, they don't. Uh, let me show you. Okay. What they have instead? That seems crappy. Uh, so, what's the. Uh, okay, yeah, fine. <laughs> That's not a very good idea. Uh, if you're an FBC, which of course uh, I, I made a funny joke, uh, net, net uh, arm can be big NDN2 BSC, where they all have to care about this. Yeah. So that doesn't work for the well, Indian. I think Linux can run in big Indian, but yeah. uh, on some uh, IoT channel, like I see some guy, one player, say, hey, I managed to boot uh, in big Indian, but it breaks here. And so, yeah, yeah it work. Like, it's <laughs> tough to boot. Yeah, I think that the NetBeast haven't tried the uh, ARM64 big Indian, but uh, I think they're crazy enough to try. Yeah. <laughs> they really like their big and if, if someone will try it will be some of the uh, some one of the NBA developers. Yeah, there's this one guy, he loves uh, he loves having hard life. He loves setting the world cross <laughs> But we have lots of other big engine platforms, so yeah. the rest of the code base should be pretty yeah. good. More questions? No? Hey, thank you. <laughs>